One of my followers tagged me in this woman's video, and I am so glad that they alerted me to this story because it is triggering. It is rage inducing. This woman, um, this content creator is speaking about the, the redhead lady and how she was denied medication because she was of childbearing age. She wasn't pregnant, but a hypothetical fetus was promoted to a higher level than this woman that's actually here alive and needing help. Tara was really raw in recounting the story because she was recounting it as she was angry, as she was going through it. And listening to her story is enraging secondhand and this happened a while ago. How these doctors have this God complex where they can deny women medication, deny women services for an unborn fetus. And she says that she is child free. She does not want to have kids. So prioritizing an unborn fetus that she doesn't want to even have over this woman that is going through something right now is egregious. And so many people want to continue to strip women's rights away. And the, it's like some people do not understand the snowball effect, the far reaching effect, because it's not just protecting the unborn, it's continuing to strip rights from women. If you're on my TikTok page, I am going to embed the videos of this content creator who is speaking about this and the two videos from Tara that were detailing what she is going through. And here is the Jezebel article. A woman was denied medication for being of childbearing age. She just sued the hospital. Tara Rule says her doctor in upstate New York was determined to protect a hypothetical fetus instead of helping her treat debilitating pain. Last September, New York resident Tara Rule posted a raw emotional video on TikTok saying she had been denied medication to treat a debilitating condition called cluster headaches because her new neurologist told her she was of childbearing age and the medication could cause birth defects to a hypothetical fetus. Rule said that as she sat in her neurologist's office in, at Glen Falls Hospital, she told him she never planned to have kids and would have a small portion if she ever became pregnant, referencing the overturning of Roe v. Wade. He responded that getting the care she was seeking is trickier now with the way things are going. He also said she should bring in her partner in on the conversation on her medical care. We are still at the point where these men think that men should have a say in women's health care. Rule asked if the issue preventing her from getting the highly effective medication was solely that she could become pregnant and if I was, like through menopause, would the medication be very effective for cluster headaches? The doctor affirmed it would. He also asked about her SEX life and whether she she's with a steady person. Rule shared the audio recordings of the appointment on TikTok at the time. Why is a neurologist asking about her SEX life? Okay, last week, Rule filed a lawsuit against Albany Medical Health Partners, charging the largest hospital in upstate New York with discrimination over the denial of her medication and a string of incidents afterwards. The suit alleges that denying her medication because she's of childbearing age and prioritizing an imagined fetus over her health violates federal law, specifically the Affordable Care Act's Anti-Discrimination Provisions and the Age Discrimination Act. Where are we drawing the line here? Rule told Je Jezebel. Are hospitals going to require someone share a proof, I mean a pregnancy test, proof that they're on um, birth control, get a hysterectomy to, um, to get life-saving health care? She says she hopes her lawsuit can create more medical protection for people of child-pairing age post Roe. In a similar example of post row concerns around the mere possibility of pregnancy impacting people's access to medication, several people who could become pregnant have, have reported being denied sometimes life-saving medications that are deemed abortifacients. 
by doctors and pharmacists. Even before Roe was overturned in 2021, a pregnant woman in Alabama was arrested and prosecuted for trying to pick up pain medication from her pharmacist to manage chronic a, a chronic back condition. As police allege, she was endangering her pregnancy. Rule told Jezebel she's heard from people who say they were denied everything from acne medication to chemotherapy for the same reason. Rule, whose cluster headaches are exacerbated by her Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, described to Jezebel how the pain can be so severe that she can lose consciousness and pointed to a study associating cluster headaches with higher rates of self-deletion ideation due to unmanageable pain. She's long struggled to find helpful treatments and said the neurologist wouldn't even give her the name of the medication he referenced because Rule said he was so determined to protect a hypothetical fetus. With Rule's unique lawsuit lawsuit to challenge how hypothetical pregnancy can affect access to care, she says she's determined to show that her life as a person with a disability has more value than an imagined unborn fetus. This is the reason why this is so important. People think, oh, we're just protecting life. Well, if you're protecting life, why aren't women that are here and alive important? In addition to Rule's allegations of discrimination, her suit accuses Albany Medical Health Partners of privacy violations and fraud. According to Rule, after she shared audio recordings of her interactions with the neurologist on TikTok, an employee at the hospital contacted another hospital in the area, alleging that Rule live streamed her appointments. This led to Rule's removal from the second hospital, Malta Medical, also under Albany Medical Health Partners, in the middle of treatment for her cluster headaches. Rule denies live streaming. In the lawsuit, Rule alleges her nurse practitioner at Malta discharged her against her will with the help of armed security, but her insurance company Told, I mean, was told that she voluntarily left mid-treatment, which Rule argues amounts to falsification of records. Rule also alleges that the nurse practitioner who had removed, um, who had her removed at Malta, violated her privacy rights by sending Facebook messages to Rule's partner that include her medical details. A spokesperson for Albany Medical Health Partners told Jezebel that the hospital system cannot comment on pending litigation. Last year, they told USA Today about rules allegations. Our mission is to care for any patient who needs us. We encourage all patients to be actively engaged in their care. When any patient brings a concern forward, we investigate in a timely manner. Rule's case shows how the notion of fetal personhood, an ideology that regards embryos as separate people with rights at odds with the pregnant persons, can be taken even further, said Dana Sussman, Deputy Executive Director at Pregnancy Justice, which isn't working on Rule's case. What we're seeing is how this ideology can stand beyond pregnancy itself. The idea that you can even become pregnant, then you can no longer make decisions about your own body or access medical care, Sussman told Jezebel. In the months since Rule was denied care at Glen Falls Hospital, she maintains that she's been essentially blacklisted by hospitals in the area, forcing her to travel out of state for medical care and incur significant out-of-pocket costs. She hasn't, she still hasn't obtained the highly effective medication her neurologist referenced to her. Rule told Jezebel she never wanted to file a lawsuit. She just wanted an apology or to be able to go to a hospital in her area without being turned away for sharing her story on TikTok. If people don't understand why or how women are under attack, this is one type of case. And she's not the only one. Women who have um, autoimmune diseases, fibroids, endometriosis, anything like that where they need like pregnancy, no, I'm sorry, birth control pills or something like that. And doctors can just say, well, you know, maybe you're going to, you're going to stop your chances of getting pregnant or this could harm your chances. This could harm a potential fetus. It's like, let women make these decisions for themselves. Stop this God complex that many of them have. And yes, I am seething. I'm so enraged for these God complex um, doctors that take away women's rights 
and freedoms. Okay, if you're on TikTok, I'm going to put um, embed the links and you can just click on these women's videos. If you're on my YouTube page, here come the videos now. Like, comment, share. This woman was denied medication for being of childbearing age. Carol Rule says her doctor in upstate New York was determined to protect a hypothetical fetus instead of helping her treat debilitating pain? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? First, this whole Alabama situation, the embryos are now considered kids. Now we got this, talking about a hypothetical fetus. You're gonna put a hypothetical fetus before a woman who is alive right now. This is why I always say people who are pro-life, they're not, they're pro forced birth. Last September, Tara posted a video on this app talking about how she would deny medication to treat a debilitating condition called cluster headaches because her neurologist told her that she was of childbearing age, that medication could cause birth defects to a hypothetical fetus. She told her doctor that she did not plan on having kids and would have a abortion if she became pregnant. Referencing the overturning of Roe versus Wade, he responded that getting that care with seeking is trickier now than with things the way the way things are going. He also said that she should bring her partner in on a conversation on her medical care. What about HIPAA? She don't have to bring in her partner for nothing. She filed a lawsuit and I'm so proud of her because I would have do the same thing, okay? That don't make no sense. You're gonna sit there and have that woman be in pain just because she might get pregnant in the future. Make that make sense, especially if she already says she doesn't want kids, she's child free. I'm child free. I would have been so mad at that doctor for not giving me medication. I'm sitting here struggling and in pain, but because I'm child rearing age, you're not gonna give me this medication? <sighs> Honestly, where does it end in this country? How can they sit there and try to deny someone medication because of a future possible fetus? I'm so sick of it here. I wanna start this off by making something very clear. I am not crying out of weakness. I'm crying because I am fucking angry. And if you don't believe the thing that I am about to tell you in this video, don't worry, I recorded it. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Tara. I've been sick my entire life. I've got a, um, I have a genetic condition. It's very rare. I have an autoimmune disorder. Oh, uh, I get these cluster headaches. Uh, they also call them, you know, unaliving headaches because the pain is so severe that people actually, you know, choose not to be here anymore as a result. And I get it. I've been there. I was very close. I started getting these headaches again. I don't know what triggers it, but I went to I went to the neurologist, and this is not a religious hospital, okay? And I live in New York, where you know, I thought maybe I'd be a little bit safer in New York, but no. I go in there to try to get help with my headaches, <laughs> and the doctor tells me that really, because I've had allergic reactions to the other options. There are options that are very, you know, um, successful treatments, but because I'm of childbearing age, I, he won't prescribe them, I can't get them. And I say, well, I'm not having kids. I've got Ellers Danlos, I wouldn't pass this on to anybody, you know, this, this is not a life anyway. I'm in pain every single day, I wouldn't do that to someone. And he said, as long as I am of childbearing age, regardless of sexual partner, regardless of birth control method, regardless of any of that, I can't take the treatments because there's a possibility I could get pregnant. And I said, well, what if I don't have sex? What if I get a partner with a vasectomy? It doesn't matter because I could get fucking... And I could have the baby and I need to prioritize that. And those medicines cause birth defects. And I said, well, I'm already out of medication that causes severe birth defects. And he said, so what would you do if you got pregnant? I said, well, I would have no choice because like the medicine I'm on causes complications with the pregnancy. And you know, I could literally die based on the medication I'm already on. And he told me, he looked me 
me dead in the eye and he said, well, that's something you need to think about. And I said, I don't understand. Like, we're really going to prioritize the life of, of the hypothetical situation over my pain. I'm in pain every day. I can't live like this. And this is what I was talking about to everyone who was like, well, it's not going to affect you. This is about saving children. No, it's not. <laughs> and now I can't live my kid. How am I going to live like this? <laughs> I suffer every day. <laughs> No, he told me that um, any sexual partner I had would have to come in and give authorization and say, it's okay for me to take this medicine. That could cause a birth defect, maybe. God, I hate having a uterus. Okay, part two. This is the recording. I've been through absolute hell with the medical system. Since I was a teenager, I have really, really severe post-traumatic stress disorder from medical trauma. This was extraordinarily triggering. I did not get the whole conversation because obviously I don't record all my doctor's appointments, which from now on I probably will. Um, right before I started recording, there was mention on his side of the R word. Like, I, you know, cause I was saying I'm not gonna have children. And he said, that alone was triggering because I have a history of, you know, being R-worded. Um, he was asking me about, like, sex. This is a neurologist, by the way. This is not an OBGYN. Asked me about sex, what kind of sex I was having, partners, stuff like that. That's not his place. I know Roe v. Wade being overturned is affecting, you know, obviously everyone federally, but in New York State, you know, your medical license comes from the state you reside in, and in no way a neurologist should have any say on things regarding reproduction. So I was like, you know, I'm not gonna have children. I've been sick my whole life, blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, you know, the best medications are for, you know, they can cause birth defects. And that's when he tried to be like, well, it's really the insurance company because of like the new legislation and stuff. If I were to write it to you, the insurance company wouldn't cover it because it could cause birth defects. So when I said, well, the medication that I'm currently taking, mycophenolate, um, causes some of the worst birth defects out there and my insurance company covers it completely. They don't even use my secondary insurance plan. They completely cover it. And that's when I said, you know, I'm willing to pay for whatever will stop this pain out of pocket. What are the medications so that I can either go to another physician who's more comfortable writing the prescription or so I can pay for it out of pocket. He turned his computer screen away so I couldn't see the names and he refused to give them to me. So then he said, the medicine you take doesn't cause birth defects. And I said, yeah, it does. Let me see if I have the bottle. And that's how I segued into starting to record him because I was looking for the bottle in my bag. I didn't have it, but then he took out his phone and he started Googling it. And what you're gonna hear is when it picks up on him reading off the birth effects that my medication that I'm currently on causes. Yeah, I don't have my bottle with me. like uh, defects, uh, absent ears, jaw, heart defects, cleft lip, cleft palate. Um, so you're not having intercourse? I am. Well, then you could get pregnant. Could I you? mean, sure, but I, I use protection. It's not, it's not, okay. So, so the point is that, uh, you know, what, if you get pregnant, what are you gonna do? I would have to get an abortion. Why? 
Because of the wrestler standoffs? Yeah, because I'm on cell subs. Well, no, I mean, you can, you can have things tested. You can test, uh, but, but yeah, it's trickier now with uh, the way things are going. Yeah. Uh, is that, you know, you can't, uh, you know, move along and, and see, see if these things develop before you, you make a choice like that. So, yeah, you, you do have to think about it deeply. And you do have to anticipate. Say, I'm, I got. I, I'm pregnant. What am I going to do? Yeah. You can't. You can't deny the fact that you could get pregnant and, and go along that tack. You have to say, okay, if I get pregnant, even though I'm not planning on it, the risk is low. If I get pregnant, this is this is my plan of action. And you know, if you if you're with a steady person, mm -hmm. you, know, you have to bring him in on the conversation as well. Um, if I was. So are the, the effectiveness is of the medications you were saying, because you were like, some are more effective than others yeah. um, for like childbearing age, whatever. If I was not, if I was like through menopause, would they be very effective for yeah, the cholesterol yeah, addicts? Yeah, they would be. Uh, so okay. the only thing that's kind of stopping it is the fact that at some point in my life, I well, could get pregnant. How's your sleep? I mean, I take hydroxyzine for it. I am gonna make a part three where I do post, you know, where he says that the medications that would be most effective for my condition, I cannot, he will not prescribe because I'm of childbearing age and they could potentially cause side effects, but the one he will is willing to prescribe, um, you know, just keep an eye on it because my blood pressure is already dangerously low and this seriously reduces your blood pressure. So, you know, just keep an eye on it. He's literally putting me on a medication that could kill me because the other one could cause birth defects in a hypothetical child that I am not gonna have. So I'll post that, part three.